this is chapter number three that is two variable regression model the problem of estimation before going into the detail of this chapter let's recall that in our previous lecture we had two variables one dependent variable and the other is independent variable and we made a graph with the help of population regression function and we know that population regression function is not directly observable so we estimated it from sample regression function as well as you observe that sample regression function line is not the exact mirror of population regression function line it is just because of sampling error that we uh, have already discussed in our previous lecture population regression line is equals to beta 1 plus beta 2 xi where beta 1 is the intercept beta 2 is the slope of line and x is the independent variable likewise we had sample regression function uh, which is the estimated form because it is based on samples as it is difficult to observe population regression function directly so we have to uh, use sample regression function in this graph you can see that sample regression function this one is not a true picture of population regression function it is just because of sampling errors we have different methods with the help of which we can determine the sample regression function in such a manner that it is as close as possible to the actual y here mu i is the error term this one mu i is the error term representing a difference between actual y that is y i or you can say that uh, y i for population and the expected mean value of y given x i for the population and mu i hat is the difference between actual y that is y i and y i hat that is estimated y for sample here you can see that mu i that is the error of population splits into two parts uh, that is uh, it is split into sample error that is mu i hat and the distance between sampling and population this one so these two parts are equal to population error that is mu i which uh, is split into two parts that is mu i hat um, that is the difference between actual y min uh, and expected uh, value of y for sample and the distance between sampling and population so this whole is equals to mu i that is error term for population the method of ordinary least squares that is OLS we would like to determine sample regression function in such a manner that it is as close as possible to the actual y uh, the method of ordinary least squares is attributed to Carol Friedrich Gauss a German mathematician to understand this method we first explain the least squares principle 
and recall the two variables uh, population regression function that is yi is equals to beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus mu i so here are just two variables y and x and the equation is yi is equals to beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus mu i uh, and we have discussed that the population regression function is not directly observable so we estimate it from the sample regression function that is yi is equals to beta 1 hat plus beta 2 hat xi plus mu i hat or you can say that yi is equals to yi hat plus mu i hat yi hat is uh, as you can say equals to beta 1 hat plus beta 2 hat xi that is the expected value of y given x for sample uh, where yi hat is the estimated value of yi but now the question is how is the sample regression function determined itself to see this let us proceed for the next step uh, that is mu i hat is equals to y i minus y i hat uh, which is uh, equals to y i minus beta 1 hat minus beta 2 x i that is the expected value of y i that is y i hat uh, here the equation becomes mu i hat is equals to y i minus beta 1 hat minus beta 2 hat x i which shows that the residual term that is mu i hat is the difference between actual and estimated y values that is actual and estimated y values or you can say y i minus y i hat Uh, according to this method, the closer the error, the better is the sampling. If the gap is small between sampling and population, then the model is considered to be the good and you can easily determine the final figures of population on the basis of sampling. Here is the graphical representation. this one uh, in this figure this is the sample regression function line this one uh, on horizontal axis we have actual values of x x1 x2 x3 and x4 uh, they remain same as the values of x are given to us and we have to determine the values of y and on y-axis, we are having values of y. Our regression line is based on average or estimated values of y given x. So consider uh, this as actual y. This point, if you consider this point as yi or actual y. And this point as yi hat then the difference between these two points is mu i hat if you say that if this point is y i or the actual y and this point this one as y i hat so the difference between these two terms is the residual term or mu i hat or if we elaborate this equation uh, 
you can say that mu i hat is equals to y i minus beta 1 hat minus beta 2 hat x i. Now according to OLS, we have to minimize the error term to its possible level. For this purpose, we may adopt the following criteria that is choose the sample regression function in a line in such a way that the sum of the residual is equals to 0. That is that is sum of all the residual terms is equals to 0. Or you can say that summation mu i hat is equals to summation Y i minus Y i hat is equals to zero. If you say that yi minus yi hat is equals to error term and if we uh, calculate all these error terms that is mu1, mu2, mu3 and mu4 and then we add up all these error terms and if and um, their summation is equals to 0 which means that the model is perfect and the sample is a true mirror of a population or sample is exactly representing the actual value. Uh, if we adopt the criteria of minimizing uh, summation mu i hat then this figure here the residuals mu hat 2 and mu hat 3 as well as mu hat 1 and mu hat 4 receive the same weightage in the sum mu i hat mu um, hat 1 plus mu 2 hat plus mu 3 hat plus mu 4 hat although the first two residuals that is this one and this one these two residuals mu 2 hat and mu 3 hat are much closer to sample regression function line than the errors that are mu hat 1 and mu hat 4 in other words all the residuals receive equal importance no matter how close or how widely scattered the individual observations are from the sample regression function. A consequence of uh, this is that it is quite possible that the algebraic sum of the uh, residual term is small or even you can say is equals to zero although the residual terms are widely scattered around sample regression function. Uh, to see this, uh, assume that mu 1 hat has the value of plus 10. If I write here, mu 1 hat is equals to plus 10. Mu 2 hat is equals to minus 2. 
as it is below sample regression function line mu uh, 3 hat is equals to plus 2 and mu 4 hat is equals to minus 10 and when we add up all these residual terms that is mu hat 1 plus mu hat 2 plus mu hat 3 plus mu hat 4 that is is equals to plus 10 minus 2 plus 2 minus 10 here minus 10 and plus 10 cancels out each other minus 2 cancels with plus 2 so here the sum becomes you can say sum of all the residual terms is equals to 0 which means that uh, this method is not correct as you can see that the distance of some errors is large here this one and sum is quite small for mu uh, 2 hat and mu 3 hat and you are ignoring the difference between them when you take the sum of all these errors and which is equals to 0. If you see this figure here at mu uh, 1 hat, the difference of yi and yi hat is large as compared to the distance of yi and uh, y i hat for mu hat 2 where it is small here the distance is uh, between y i and y i hat is larger as compared to the distance between these two points of mu hat 2 and here it is small if we take the sum of these errors that is when we add up all these errors uh, mu hat 1 plus mu hat 2 plus mu hat 3 and mu hat 4 then it becomes equal to 0 or in other words we can say all the residual receive um, equal importance no matter how close or widely scattered the individual observations are from sample regression function and we are ignoring this fact here Here we are just adding up all these error terms uh, and ignoring the fact of the individual weightage of uh, each error term that how close and how far it is from the actual uh, values. Uh, we can avoid this problem if we adopt the least square criteria which states that the sample regression function can be fixed in such a way that if we take the square of uh, sum of error terms that is summation mu i hat this one uh, by this by the help of this method the positive values remain positive and the negative values become positive as well because we are taking the square of all the values and uh, and then if we take a sum of it then we can check that to how much extent the sample is depicting the population uh, as noted previously under the minimum summation mu i hat criteria the sum can be small even though the residuals are widely spread around sample regression function but this is not possible under least squares procedure for the larger the mu i uh, in absolute values the larger is the uh, sum of mu uh, i hat square so here when we take the square of this term you can say of mu 
uh, summation mu i hat it becomes summation mu i hat square is equals to summation y i minus y i hat whole square which can be written um, as follows that is summation mu i hat square is equals to summation y i minus beta 1 hat minus beta 2 hat x i whole square uh, when we take the sum of these values and then we uh, take the square of the sum of these error terms then we can minimize uh, the error or we can easily check that to how much extent the sample is depicting the population and here is the method uh, if we take the square of uh, the sum of errors so we can check the uh, uh, to how much extent the sample is depicting the population Here is the example of ordinary least square method, um, which is the experimental determination of sample regression function. Just consider the hypothetical data on y and x uh, given in column 1 and column 2 respectively. Uh, let us now conduct two experiments. In experiment 1, um, let beta 1 hat is equals to 1.572 and beta 2 hat is equals to 1.357. Um, in the next uh, lecture, we will be discussing about the uh, values of beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat. Uh, using these beta values and the x values given in this table, we can easily compute the estimated y i uh, that is given in column 3. If we have the values of betas and we have the values of uh, x variable, then we can easily find out the values of estimated y i. Uh, now let us conduct another experiment but this time using the values uh, using different values of beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat for now we are taking beta 1 hat as 3 and beta 2 hat as 1 so the estimated values of y i from this experiment are given as y hat 2 i uh, in column number 6 Uh, since the beta values in the two experiments are different, we get different values for the estimated residuals as well. Here mu hat i, this one, uh, is the residual for the first experiment and mu 2 i hat, that is column number 7, is showing the uh, values of a residual term for the second experiment and the square of these residuals are mentioned in column 5 that is for mu i hat mu hat 1 square and in column 8 that is uh, showing mu 2 uh, mu 2 i hat square Uh, obviously, as expected, that these residual sums of the square are different since they are based on different sets of beta values. Uh, now, which sets of the beta values should we choose? Um, and the answer is, since the beta values of the first experiment gave us a lower summation of mu uh, hat square that is 12.2 uh, 
um, than that obtained from the beta values of the uh, second experiment that is 14. So we might say that the betas of the first experiment are the best values, this one. So we can say that the principle or the method of least squares chooses beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat in such a manner that for a given sample or set of data, summation of mu um, hat square is as small as possible. So here, uh, the sum of errors uh, obtained from experiment 1 is 12 and for from experiment 2 it is 14 so we can say that this is the minimized error that is 12.214 um, here are the formulas you can see, uh, uh, see from uh, there that why uh, 1 hat is obtained from uh, this equation by adding the values here and y2 by adding these values here is the formula for residual terms that is actual y minus estimated y uh, 